In this video, I take you behind the scenes of the Rustic Songbird podcast, where I interview vocal coach Tiffany Van Boxtel all about how to sing with emotion. So if you're a singer-songwriter who wants to make sure that the passion behind your song comes through in your music and connects with your listeners, then you're going to get some great advice and some practical tips for how you can sing with emotion. I want to invite you to subscribe to the Rustic Songbird podcast for lots of interviews with people in the music industry that will give you great advice for taking your music to the next level. You can check out all the previous episodes at rusticsongbird.com forward slash podcast. Also subscribe to this YouTube channel for more videos like this coming soon. All right, let's get into today's show. My guest on the show today is Tiffany Van Boxtel. She is a vocal coach and the host of the Star Singer podcast. We're going to be talking all about how to sing your songs with emotion today. She's a vocal coach that helps singer songwriters give vocal performances that they're proud of without taking overpriced lessons or having hours of practice. And I love that we're going to be talking about this on the show because it's something that's come up in my journey and I think it's going to be really helpful for our audience. So Tiffany, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks so much for having me. I'm glad to have you on here to share your story and share some tips from your experience. I know you've worked one-on-one -on -one with a lot of people as far as uh, bringing their unique voice and sound and uh, performing their songs as a singer-songwriter and uh, really bringing out that emotion in the heart of the song. So we're going to get into that today. But first, tell me a little bit about how you got started doing all of this. Um, well, I'm Tiffany. Hi. <laughs> um, and I wanted to be a high school choir director. But in college, I had a whole bunch of people asking me if I would teach them voice lessons, if I would teach their kids voice lessons. And as a college student, that's pretty good. I mean, that's a pretty good gig. Yeah. So I started doing that as well on the side. And by the time I graduated, I had like a studio of like 35 people. That's um, awesome. And was, thank you. I was already making like more money than a teacher and was in control of my own hours and I didn't have to deal with any like classroom management I just got to get to right at the heart of working one-on-one -on -one. and so I thought wow. this is really cool let's just keep going with this and see how it goes and the studio grew and grew and grew and I was like I cannot teach 60 voice lessons a week and I found myself repeating a lot of information mm -hmm. even though it's like very individualized so I just thought how can I bring this to more people and like create a method so that more people can access it for a lower price and especially people who feel like they're more independent you know you don't want to go to a weekly voice lesson every week but you still have some questions and you yeah. still need some guidance and some feedback and so that's why I created the star singer green room and like you said I like to share a lot of things not unlike you and your podcast that that help singer songwriters and singers with their performances in lots of different aspects. Mm -hmm. So you got to the point of doing as much as you could time wise, but you still wanted to help more people. So that's where you kind of turn to the internet, like put something out online to teach people. And that way you can help more people and you know, still have your sanity. So <laughs> I know that uh, that's really, really busy though. That's a lot of students and really exciting that you were able to see the consistency of like, oh, I hear these questions over and over. And then those are the things that you can address in the stuff that you're putting out online. So I love that. Oh, thank you so much. It just, it just made sense. Yeah. And sometimes I think it's interesting to go back because you said you had a different plan. You were planning to be a choir teacher, like you were going for that. But then this developed and you realized, oh, I'm actually making more money. I have more control of my schedule and I'm actually helping people. And so it kind of came together in a different way than you expected, but became something beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm still getting to work like within my craft, you know, and within mm -hmm. both of my degrees, so vocal performance and music education. So it's yep. like a perfect bridge. I know a lot of people might be, might be worried about if they are going, you know, that track or if they are investing in like a different type of program, like how that's going to manifest in their career. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to know that I'm using both of those things. And I know that that's top of mind for a lot of people too. You know, you want to be sure that you're 
it's not going to happen all the time, right? Like you're not, you're probably not going to use everything the way that you think. So yeah. Thanks for pointing that out. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's so cool. And sometimes it takes somebody from the outside to see that too, as you're explaining it, I thought, wow, how cool is that? Uh, that you are being able to use those gifts, but in a different way than you expected. So just being open to that and being flexible. I've seen so many musicians who start off in one genre even, or they start off in one style or one situation. Like they might be um, singing at coffee shops and then they realize, oh, this would fit better at festivals or, you know, something like that. Or they grow up singing in church and then they end up singing in a band later on. And so there's like little choices that we make and little experiences that build over time that kind of become our sound and our style. And it's not always what we think, but we have some kind of idea at least to begin with. And so what are the common things that you see as people come into lessons, um, people that are specifically songwriters who are wanting to like perform their own songs? What are the common struggles that you see with them? Well, spe specifically with songwriters, hmm, I would like to, well, I see, actually I see this with everybody. A lot of people will come in and, you know, I'll ask them like, hey, why are you here? Like, what do you want to do? And they'll start with like technical goals. Like, oh, I want to sing higher. Mm. Oh, I want to like learn how to support with the diaphragm. I'm not even going to go there because I could rant. <laughs> um, I'm going to want to bridge and connect my vocal break. So these are all like technical goals. Yeah. So it's like, well, why do you want to do that? You know, and even if, you know, if you're a singer songwriter specifically, there's still that question because it can be so easy to assume like, oh, well, because I'm a singer songwriter, but like, it's like, yeah, but like, what do you want to do? Cause the way you also brought up, there are many different avenues. Like you could be like specifically niched for festivals. Like you could be, all you do is, you know, not all you do. I don't mean it that way, but you're spoke, you focus specifically on being a recording artist mm -hmm. and you just want to, you know, sell some of your music online, share some of your music online with people, but you don't, you choose not to perform live. Yeah. I mean, so that's you start your choice. with the goal of asking, why are you doing this? What do you want to get out of this? Yeah, exactly. Because if you don't know that, then like, if you're going to go on tour, then obviously vocal health is going to be at the top of mind because you're going to be singing, you know, night after night um, in different spaces with different mm -hmm. setups. And, and so you'll need you stamina. Have to be yeah, you're just gonna have to like really aware of that. So that's going to be a different approach. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to save yourself a lot of time and money and energy, just knowing that and like Lydia said, like being flexible, like it may not turn out the way that you want, or you don't have to marry that idea or commit to that idea super completely. But just having that idea and coming in, if you are working with a voice teacher or a vocal coach, that's going to help them to be able to be more efficient with you and you'll be able to get the results faster mm -hmm. and you'll be able to see improvement faster. That's so interesting that people come to you with something specific and technical in mind. Like, Oh, I just want to yeah, expand my range and I want to like achieve yeah. this thing with my voice. But then you take it even deeper and say, well, that doesn't really matter unless you know why you're doing this. Right. So if you, if you're like, oh, I want to sing higher because I, I love all these cover songs that just kind of go out of my range. I don't really want to transpose them too much. So I really kind of want to just add these songs to my set list because I love them. I want to share them with other people. Well, okay. Then we're working on singing higher for a specific goal. And that's yeah. going to like mean more and it's going to keep us more on track. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've noticed that with cover songs too. If you're trying to sing something that's in somebody else's range, or like a key you're not normally comfortable in, like it's really different. And then as a songwriter, you can kind of write it in a key that's comfortable to sing. You can keep it in a range that feels good to you. And so I find myself always changing the key. If I'm doing a cover song, I'll figure out what key is good for my voice, especially if it's a male songwriter, then I'm usually totally. in a totally different key as an alto singer. And so if it's like in G, I'm probably changing it to the key of C because I know that's comfortable in my range. I know it's easy to sing. And then if I'm singing like at a church and I want people to sing along with me, it needs to be in that comfortable range for them to sing along, especially if they're not singers. And so I yeah. think about that in, in my planning of like, you know, what's going to be comfortable for my voice. But if we try to copy somebody else, 
we don't have their range. We don't have their set of vocal pipes, right? So we have to work with what we've got. But I love that everyone's unique. Like our voices are like a fingerprint. They're all different. And it's a muscle that can be exercised and you can use it in different ways to express the meaning of your songs. And I love that. So can we talk a little bit about how to, um, how to get your own voice like ready to, um, to share that emotion in the song? Like what are some normal things that you would recommend to someone that's just getting started trying to figure this out? So I think that one thing that's really important before you even, I mean, obviously you can have emotion and, and joy and just sharing the music, but it's really important to develop like a strong foundation first. And it's not like you have to take like years and years and years of voice lessons. It's just something where you want to have a plan. You want to have some expert guidance. You want to be on track. You want to be able to hear yourself and like just be proud enough or be confident enough to then be able to drop the veil and start working a little bit more with that audience connection and with that emotional connection because it's impossible to do if you don't have confidence when you first just with what you're putting out there originally. Mm -hmm. So having that, just getting on track with that, maybe getting a vocal coach, maybe just popping in for one voice lesson just to just kind of see where you're at, get a game plan, um, or really, I mean, with bare bones, I would say know what you want to do, know what technically you want to improve, and then if you are doing YouTube, find one voice teacher on YouTube and just focus on that one subject. Because if you're mm. moving from voice teacher to voice teacher on YouTube, they could all be saying amazing, helpful things, but they might be saying it in different ways. And it might seem contradictory, even though it's not. And it, it, it might get you off track. We want to keep you on track and focused. So yes. that's like an easy way to do it if you're like really, really strapped for cash. But it's going to be a little bit more efficient to at least get some guidance so you are feeling comfortable with the track that you're on. I love that because when you are comfortable and when you're confident, that's going to come across in your music because you've done the work to prepare yourself. And so I love that it's more than just the techniques of, you know, how to sing higher and all of that, like that comes later. But like you said, building that foundation and knowing why you're doing this is a big part of it of, you know, putting that out there as you're performing your song, like people are going to hear from the songwriter, like how they wrote that song and what it means to them. If you're not distracted by what else is going on in the room and like trying to figure out things with your range, like that stuff needs to happen in practice. That's not stuff that you work on on stage. So how important is it to have the right mindset going into this? Well, I think that that mindset like comes from that confidence, you know, like if you're worried about, oh my God, am I going to hit this high note? Like, you're done. You've lost that connection. Like, cause now it's about you and it, it really can't be about you. I mean, it's great that you're enjoying what you're doing, but if you're making it about you by worrying about what you're putting out there, that's going to lose that connection. That makes sense. So like if you're freaking out on the inside <laughs> it might show, you know, but if you're confident on the inside, then that will show and you're singing the same song. And so um, I think it's interesting from performance to performance, how you can be different as well. So are there any kinds of practical like warm ups that you recommend or things to do to prepare your voice going into performing your songs? Yeah, totally. Um, prefaces with you can't do anything the night, like the day of, like nothing's going to make a difference. Like you can't just, this is something that you're going to be developing long-term. You should be working on, you know, if you're serious about this, this has got to come first. You know, this comes right along with, I'm practicing my guitar. I'm practicing my 
lyric writing. I am crafting my melodies. I'm working on my voice. I'm doing all of these things. So that's like, got to come first. And I forgot the original question. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we were talking about just like having a routine of like every day I like drink this much water or I I hum to warm up. And like every time before I stand on stage, you know, I just take a moment to just take a deep breath, you know, things like that. What are some practical things that you recommend as a routine? So a lot of this is individualized, but I think just thinking about having a routine is really, really good. So you bring up a really good point. Um, As far as warming up, I think you can do twofold. So you can use vocal exercises that are going to improve your voice, but you're also going to be warming up as well. Um, If you have like a gig that night, you probably should sing, you know, sometime during the day. And to be quite honest, it's it's not very practical to be able to expect like that you're going to be able to warm up right before you go on because there's really nowhere to do it. And like maybe in the car. So in the car, like you could do some like lip buzzes, you know, and don't, don't hold your face. Like, because that's just generating (laughs) some people suggest to do lip buzzes like this, like they'll hold their face. face. Really? And I've never seen that. (laughs) That just don't do that. (laughs) Yeah. Don't do that. Cause you're manipulating the pressure with your hand and it's, Mm. it's not coming from, it's not coming from the core when you do that. Yeah. So that's just a really good way, um, especially if, you know, you feel silly or you're like, you're like in a hallway, you know, and you don't want to actually like vocalize. You Mm -hmm. could like, "Mm," like hum a little bit, just kind of get it going a little bit Mm -hmm. in the car too. Um, I've done that and people have looked at me funny because they're like, what is she doing? So yeah, I would rather do that somewhere else, like at my house or in the car where nobody's looking at me because once you're like, warming up at sound check or something usually there's a couple random people hanging out and yeah. they don't get it <laughs> and and I mean it, it might get to a point where like you're just gonna have to be cool with that like this is my routine this is what I do and if you think I'm weird like that's that's your deal because this is what I have to do to just get ready but another like really good tip is to make sure that you've done something physical that day like you know if you're worried about it like maybe go for a run or go for a walk or just getting the blood flowing because the body is your instrument. So if that blood is flowing, I mean, it's good for the mind too to get that out of there. And then it's also good for the body. So actually a really quick kind of ninja chip ninja tip is just like, make sure you got, make sure you moved your body that day in whatever Mm -hmm. way feels good to you. Um, Because that's going to kind of just clear your mind out of any, you know, bad juju just by the cool things that exercise gives us. And then also physically getting the blood flowing. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna, that's gonna help you to sing better. I mean, if I didn't practice in college, (laughs) like, let's say I didn't practice, I would like go and work out before my voice lesson. Like straight up. Because you know that that would help. So just moving your body helps helps your body and your mind. (laughs) Yeah. We'd be like, wow. No, and I don't think I really tricked him because yeah, <laughs> he's probably awesome. not. Teachers but know these things. <laughs> teachers know these things, but it's still like I felt good. I was like, wow, my voice is really coming out the way that I want to today. It's mm-hmm. really how I envisioned it, and that itself can be powerful for you yeah. as a performer. I can tell a big difference when I take a walk. When I go out and like get some fresh air, like I just feel better for the day. And so I haven't really connected that to like getting ready to sing, but it totally makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So I love that. It's just good for you overall, your body. And like you said, everything's connected. And so if you're feeling good, of course, you're going to be singing good, right? You're going to be singing better because you've already taken that time to prepare yourself. Yeah, and takes the pressure off of like, I have to do this warm up before I sing because the reality is, you know, unless you do it at home two hours before, depending on the commute and the setup and the the whatever, it's probably going to be about one or two hours later. Mm -hmm. You know, you're probably not going to get that privacy or get that time to warm up. Right. I love that you talked about building this foundation, like a daily practice, a daily routine of like, taking care of yourself and your body and just, you know, practicing, putting in the time, the work and the effort 
because that's what's going to show on the stage because we have like this much time that we're on stage and then there's like all this time that's put into practicing and getting better and so it does take time but like you said it doesn't have to take years and years to build this up it just needs to become some kind of daily practice where um, you're showing that you're serious and you're intentional about um, you know drinking enough water or taking a walk that day like it doesn't have to be uh, something drastic (laughs) you know like if if you're like me and you're not really a runner like just take a walk that's fine (laughs) but don't let not being a runner hold you back from going outside, getting fresh air, moving your body. Um, Yeah, it's all connected. So totally. um, I think that's all really, really good advice that you shared. Thank you. I love how you said like, yeah, it doesn't have to take a lot of time because yeah, the members of my green room, I'm recommending 10 to 15 minutes, three to four times a week. That's totally doable. Totally doable. And a lot of that comes down to what we talked about before, knowing what your end goal is and then knowing what your technical goal is. And that's going to really just cut down on all of the stuff that you don't actually need to be focusing on right now. So you can focus on the things that are actually going to move your singing forward. I love that because it's not like a quick fix for this. Like, oh, just do this little exercise and that'll fix your problem. Like there's so much that goes into it as far as like, making it something you do every day, building that routine. And then it's just who you are. You just show up and do your thing and you're not thinking about it. You're not stressing about it. You're not worried. Like, am I going to hit that high note? Because you know, I hit this high note when I sing this song. I hit it all the time. I can do it here. Um, And so I think that mindset is a huge part of it. That's helped me a lot as far as how I'm thinking about things. And then I really like what you said earlier. It's not about you. Like if you're all in your head about, you're singing, then you're not really connecting to your audience. So could you speak to that for a minute? Yeah, sure. So like we've developed this, like we've developed this foundation. So you're feeling good. You have your routine, you're feeling comfortable and confident. You're moving your voice forward. Like you, like you said, you know, you're, you're with it every day. So you're like, yeah, I got this. I totally got this. So, I mean, then that gives you room to start to do this more, emotional performance work Mm -hmm. and this is like where the fun begins yeah after you've put in all that work now it's time to (laughs) well you can do them simultaneously (laughs) you know if you're if you're doing half and half you know it doesn't have to be like dessert after dinner but you do need to make sure that you're like getting your vegetables in so to speak you know you are doing a little bit of of your practice and then you can do some some fun stuff but the emotion work is really cool because not only is it a nice distraction for you to get out of your head and to get in the right mindset, but your body knows what it feels like to be angry. Your body knows what it feels like to be sad or happy. And when you call upon those emotions, your body will respond without you having to think about it. And your voice like, will automatically convey some of these things Hmm. so we just have to kind of plan out performance wise like what you want to say and there's a couple of different ways to do that it's probably more than a couple actually (laughs) yeah (laughs) but and yeah I I think it's it's really good that you mentioned that like plan your set list based on you know the journey that you want your audience to take like if you want to start out with a really upbeat song and you're smiling and you're jumping around or whatever it is like you know okay that's going to be a high point that's going to be energetic and then you might want to you know slowly move down to like a really reflective song and be thoughtful about it like maybe share um some more details about how you wrote the song because I feel like that stirs things up in me like if I remember the place I was when I wrote that song like um what I was going through then that helps bring up those emotions and then I sing it more. And sometimes like if I sing a song and share that story, people are already crying. Like I haven't even started singing the song, but if I just share it and they're like, yeah, I felt that too. Like that's when I see the connection with the audience. Have you seen that to be true as well? Oh, that's really cool. That's awesome. Um, Yeah. I mean, totally a lot of, I'm not like a great storyteller, so I just try to let a lot of my performances just kind of speak for themselves. And yeah, just, the song like, can speak for be, itself as well. 
Yeah, but I love that idea. That's a really, really good idea. And actually, it sounds like you were speaking like more meta. I mean, my idea was that, you know, you can do that transformation like in the song, but I love the idea of even before the song. <laughs> chunking chunking up and doing it like before the song and having this like transformation or like this theme or like this emotional journey yeah. through the entire set list. Then it's not like happy, happy sad, happy sad, happy sad because that's not real life, right? So like to me, it just makes sense. Like at the beginning, you want to have that energy and then maybe bring it down. And then how I plan a set list is I'll end with uh, like a familiar song, an upbeat song, something to like leave them on a happy note. So I'm not just like staying in the sadness, right? Um, um, so there's things you can do to plan out what you're going to say, what songs you're going to sing in what order that can kind of help you make a more natural progression yeah. of, of that. And so um, I've even done that with different keys. I don't know if you recommend doing this, but like um, once you've done this vocal work of knowing what range you're in, what keys you're singing in, you can plan to sing several songs in a row in the same key. So it's already in that mode and you can go from one song into another seamlessly, or you can build keys to go up. So you're getting stronger and stronger and just like belting at the end. And so there's things like that, that I do um, that I've just learned over time, either from, you know, watching people that do it well, or just hearing things here and there. So that's the kind of stuff that I like to share with my audience, because if you're thinking about this ahead of time, you're not figuring it out on stage. And then when moments happen, it's not a surprise. Like, oh, I wonder why people are crying when I sing this song, or I wonder why this is happening when I say this. You know, you've created that moment instead of it just happening by chance. So are there any tips that you have about like creating a moment? Creating a moment. I think focusing on one emotion word within a chunk of a song can be really powerful and it's actually really hard because if you ask somebody or you ask yourself okay what do I want to convey here they'll just start you'll just start talking in paragraphs you'll just like go and summarizing it in one emotion word is really challenging but it's also like really focused too because if you say something like well, this is a happy song, but it also has some like hints of sadness. You know, I mean, that may be true, but the audience is, isn't going to get that. Yeah. They're just going to get one thing. Yeah. They're just going to get, oh, Tiffany's confused, like, <laughs> or she's nervous or she's thinking about something else, you know, where if you're very clear and intentional with what you're putting forward and you choose one thing, it's much easier for the audience to follow or to pick up on what you're doing. Mm-hmm. But that is so good because like you said, it can get easy to distract and like think about lots of different things. And I think as creative people, we do that a lot. Like uh, we have so many ideas that we're like, oh, this, then this, then this. And instead of going on rabbit trails of like, you know, making it complicated, just focus on one thing. Like this is a generally happy song or this is going to have a sad moment. So I'm going to focus on that sadness. Or even that, like, how can we get more specific in that? Like, happy, like, gosh, how many versions of happy are there? Like, let's get out a thesaurus and let's figure out exactly what connotation we want and oh, how like that affects that. the voice. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, let's, let's pinpoint one word and let's think about that word for like this entire verse. I mean, I'm challenging you to do that because it's so hard. Like, it's so easy to just get distracted. Like, you're one sentence in, you're like, oh, I got to remind myself. I got to remind myself, like, I'm joyous right now, you know, whatever. <laughs> that was a really weird word. Yeah, or delightful. Delightful yeah. is a great happy word. <laughs> I'm feeling delight. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, like, oh, I gotta remind myself, delight, 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 delight. And that's what it's gonna be like, like in your mind, you know what I mean? Like you're gonna have to complete, like remind yourself. But it, Wouldn't it's, it get easier over time though? If you know, like when I sing this song, I'm thinking it's gonna be delightful. Like. That's it does. The emotion I want. Then you're not thinking it over and over, but you do have to have that repetition to to train your brain initially. And then once yeah. you sing that song like a hundred times, you're not going to be thinking that. Yeah, that I point, mean, you'd be, you're you'd train be surprised yourself. if you if you try it. Like it does it does take a while to just this just big overarching concept of mm -hmm. like focusing on one emotion. It, it does kind of take a while, but. Yeah, I mean, if you've done a song and you kind of have it mapped out, like the transitional emotional journey, it, it does become more natural 
Oh, and it's kind of fun too, because then it gives you room to play. Like, right. oh, I'm not, I'm not really feeling the anger here, but like, what if we played up some jealousy instead? Like that could be fun, you mm-hmm. know, and it just kind of like an experiment. And then it's more fun for you too, because there is the confidence of delivering a performance in a very consistent way. Mm-hmm. But you still have that variety and you're not a robot. So Yeah, then you're not getting bored <laughs> and yeah, you, don't you don't feel like you're bored. faking it. Like you want it to be real and authentic to like how you wrote the song and how you want people to feel when they hear your song. So if you get bored and complacent with it, what do you think the audience is doing? <laughs> you know, they're yeah, feeling they're gonna, bored too. <laughs> they're going to be able to see that. Yeah. They'll see right through it. Yeah, I totally agree. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to share some of your stories and experience and some tips for this. I think it's really helpful just to think through this and have some kind of plan for, um, you know, like the feeling that you want to convey for the song and also just building that foundation. So after you've put in that work, it's not, uh, not something you have to think about all the time. It just happens, you know, cause you've built it into your routine. It's become a habit. And so doing this work on the front end will pay off in the end. I really believe that. So I appreciate you spending some time just talking about that topic today. I think it's really helpful. And I'd love to tell people how they can get connected with you, listen to your podcast, and uh, kind of see what you're doing. Oh, thanks so much. Well, thank you for having me. Um, As Lydia mentioned, I host the Star Singer podcast. So if you're liking this podcast, Lydia was telling me a little bit more about it. And, you know, I checked it out. And it sounds like very 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 aligned with what you guys are doing over here except strictly from like a more singing perspective yeah I love that that's really cool um and then if you do want to dive a little bit deeper into you know having an amazing performance I do want to show you the dream performance process for free so I have a master class um we're going to go through the dream performance process um, it's, it's the master classes, how to give amazing singing performances that book more gigs, make more connections and make more money. And it's really awesome. about using your performance. So you can check that out at starsinger.co slash masterclass. Awesome. And it's the Star Singer podcast. So if you're already listening to this podcast, go subscribe to the Star Singer podcast to listen to more great episodes with Tiffany. And you've been interviewed a lot of people on your show as well. So lots of information, some knowledge, some great advice for anyone who's writing their songs and wanting to improve their singing or just, uh, you know, have that top of mind as you're writing too is great. Like how to sing this better Um, in the writing process, you can make those decisions. So I really appreciate your time being here on the show today and all that you're doing to help other musicians and songwriters. It's really needed. And I love all that you're doing. So thank you for being a part of this. Oh, thanks so much for having me. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already for even more great videos like this coming soon. Also, you can check out the whole archive of interviews on the Rustic Songbird podcast by going to rusticsongbird.com forward slash podcast. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.